right, welcome everybody to another episode of Health and Safety Unplugged, brought to you by Advanced Safety. And today I am joined by my good old mate, Jen Dransfield, who um, has very kindly um, offered to come in today to share her insights and knowledge when it comes to health and safety in action here in New Zealand. So Jen, welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Awesome Glad to, to be you. here Yay. on a Friday afternoon. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's so good. Um, yeah, Jen has officially put both of her phones down. Um, have you, you've turned them both off, I have right? turned both of my phones yeah. off uh, Yeah, for the first time in a very long time. Yeah, yeah, cool. So mm -hmm. if, if anything else, that's a win, right? So, totally. <clears throat> yeah, cool. So from here on in, everything else is a bonus. So I'm so pleased you've turned your phone off. Um, <laughs> Jen is one of those far too busy um super productive people so yeah it's it's great that you've got this time just to hang out mm. chew the fat yeah so for those of you out there in the health and safety world business leadership world that haven't heard or met um, jen where have you been um but for those of you who haven't perhaps we'll start with a wee a wee intro so jen would you want to yeah, cool. tell us a little bit about um, yourself well i'm jen um i have been working in health and safety and related roles for a uh, bit over 10 years, 10, 12 years, I think now-ish. Um, I've been a health and safety officer, a consultant, a trainer. Um, I've worked for uh, government funded organizations. Um, I've been a health and safety manager. I've kind of dipped my toe into a whole bunch of different mm -hmm. things. Um, and which has been really good for me, I think, because it's given me quite a bit of insight into different angles of how things function. Um, yeah. And I now obviously work at Naila Love as a health and safety advisor, um, more for sort of technical projects. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I'm feeling quite settled and yeah, awesome. sounds good. Cool, thank you. Lots to unpack there. And that's the <laughs> intention for the next wee while is to kind of delve into some of those key experiences that you, you bring mm -hmm. to the table. Often, um, <clears throat> I guess I, I fall into the trap of, because I've got access to such amazing um, business leaders and coaches and people in that space, I can tend to forget to speak to people that are on the ground, but um, leading figures and uh, opinion makers uh, in the health and safety space. So this is really awesome yeah. to be able to just stop and go, hey, Jen, let's catch <laughs> up and, and kind of chew the fat because sure. there's a lot, a lot of fat to chew. Um, and I think there's also a ton of Oh, just invaluable insights and experience that you can bring to the table um, for those tuning in. So I'm happy to share. Yay. Um, so let's delve in, right? So um, uh, as we speak, you are a health and safety advisor at Naila Love. Mm -hmm. um, Naila Love are all about building people and creating a sustainable future, right? So I had a quick mm -hmm. look to, to remind myself of what Naila Love are all <laughs> yeah. about. So from your, from your experience, from your perspective, how does Naila Love actually bring that to, to life from a health and safety perspective? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, well, Naila Love, uh, a very quick overview, um, is a, a large constructor, one of the largest constructors in New Zealand, been around for uh, more than 120 years now, still a family owned business, which mm. is really cool. Yep. Uh, and I think mm. one thing that's unique and is sort of related to this is that um, from my perspective, Naila Love hasn't really lost that core family sort of mm. um, feeling, if yep. you know what I mean. Like mm -hmm. quite often organizations will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And over time they become more corporate and they lose that mm. special aspect. Whereas Naila Love, in my experience, <clears throat> hasn't has managed to hold on to that little core mm. bit, which is really cool. Um, and I guess an element of that really is um, being and remaining open to change and remain, remaining dynamic to the world and what's happening uh, around, um, you know, around the construction industry and mm. the things that feed into that. So um, as far as building people and sustainability and all those kinds of things, those are real key aspects. Mm -hmm. um, every year, our executive, our, our board get together and they decide on some key goals that they want the health and safety um, teams from around the country to work on mm -hmm. um, and they send those out and nice. so there are 
directives there, but the great thing about it is that region to region, we're allowed to interpret and apply mm. those things yes. as to what is going to suit us in mm. our individual environment. Yep. So it's about balancing the instruction mm. with enough freedom to be able to make mm. it look like what's going to be of value to oh, you. That's so good. Right? I trust. Yeah, and mm. it's quite unique yep. in that sense. So that's one thing I really love. And uh, as I say, it's about, um, you know, the business really is quite progressive in that, um, you know, it's about staying on the bus. Mm -hmm. um, what new health and safety models are coming out of the woodwork that look like we might want to try out. Um, I can ring our group HS e-manager and sort of say to him hey i've heard about this new thing here can we give it a go and he'll go yep cool mm. give it a go get back to me tell me cool. how it went yep. um and if it works maybe we'll apply it on a national level sort of thing so wow yeah that's so good it is really cool so so you've got oh gosh there's so much even in that so i mean that there's a really high trust model there right so yep. it's basically <clears throat> here's the strategy this is the direction we're going in the how is up to the regions mm -hmm. right within reason um and then you're allowed or enabled to test break try again mm -hmm. and if it works push it back up the food chain wow yep that's so completely good. yeah so good. yeah and and it, <clears throat> i like that there's that aspect of sort of um uh, that freedom of it too um, we're still accountable you know yep. we still have to have something to show for it but mm -hmm. Naila Love and, uh, has I think more than 900 employees nationally now mm -hmm. we've got Naila Group that sits at the top yep. and then each of the regions which, which operate fairly autonomously mm -hmm. um, underneath that so uh, if the board says um, for example one of our goals for this year is to tap into um, assisting with health and safety and pre-trade training mm -hmm. uh, for people that are coming yep. through the ranks not necessarily for people that might come to work for us, but just on mm. a broader industry level, how can we contribute mm. to that with yes. the skills and the knowledge and the resource we have, right? Mm. Um, but what that looks like in Auckland might be very different to what that might look mm. like in Dunedin. So it's yeah. about tapering it to ensure that we're getting value yeah. or, or giving that value. That's so good. And from I guess from an outsider's perspective, when you're thinking about um, commercial construction, you would make the assumption that regardless of where you are in the country, it's pretty much going to be the same culture, the same wants and needs and requirements, but actually not at all. It's not the case, right? Yeah. No, mm. no, yeah. not at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of variance, yeah. you know, yeah. um, even in Canterbury here, um, we know that, you know, it, it, whenever I visit another city outside of Canterbury and I go and visit construction sites, not mm. even necessarily no loved ones, but just mm. anywhere, yep. um, there's certain things that you notice that you realize that the rebuild had su has had such mm -hmm. uh, a legacy impact yep. here in the construction industry in, in Christchurch specifically mm -hmm. uh, because there's things that kind of just happen by magic here that mm -hmm. don't necessarily happen in other places yep. Um, yep. so yeah yeah I, I can absolutely vouch for that as well um, I, I'm privileged enough to be able to travel around the country quite frequently and see sites all different shapes and sizes and all the different regions mm -hmm. and I have to agree that there is a real legacy here in, in Canterbury I think we should be really proud of that and I guess defend it to the nth degree in a way um, mm -hmm. as time goes on inevitably things do start to kind of pull back a wee bit um, you just got me thinking actually um, I don't think they'll mind me saying I was on a Naila Love project yesterday oh. um, in um, Sylvia Park there's a, a, a Kiwi, oh, yeah. Kiwi uh, properties um, project going on there. Mm -hmm. um, and I can absolutely attest to the environmental um, piece of the puzzle. I was, I was stood there watching the team dismantling all the waste products and making sure that they're all being distributed into the right bins. And it's just like, this is so good to see. And they were really proud of it too. Mm -hmm. you know, I spoke yeah. to a few of them and they were just like, yeah, this is we've been doing this from day one. Um, all the stats, all the figures were up on the board so you could see exactly like how it's all going is um, yeah really impressive mm. really yeah cool. and we have um, a lot of sort of little projects like that where it's about picking one and guinea pigging mm. it to find a system that might yep. work across the board mm -hmm. um, and testing it out as well mm. rather than just saying 
uh, across the board, here's what everyone needs to do from now on. It's yep. about finding what actually works mm -hmm. in practice, yep. because as we know, what gets dreamed up in, you know, around a board table mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily yeah. <laughs> work for people that are actually having to use mm. whatever that system is on a practical level. Yep. So uh, there's lots of little sort of things like mm. that happening. Um, I know mm. that down here in Canterbury, <clears throat> we've just uh, started rolling that sort of stuff out too. So mm. um, yeah, it's, cool. it's cool. Yeah, I think so. and, and what you've just described there as well is a really good example because I was trying, I was, I was thinking, how am I going to tease out this whole family nature within the organisation? But you've actually dispelled it out so well. Is the fact that around that decision making table, <clears throat> they are still um, aware enough or conscious enough of the importance of allowing everyone to actually contribute and to come up with the solutions. Mm -hmm. So they may be the ones steering and doing the, the, the overall direction, which is the right, absolutely the right thing. Uh, but giving you the, enough autonomy to, to have a play around and to see what works and to make yeah. those improvements. Yeah, so and good. being uh, being allowed the space as well to be able to say when something is not working. Mm. Um, mm. Because if yep. it doesn't <clears throat> work, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you have to be in a position to say, you know, have that sort of that aspect of psychological safety, even for us as safety mm -hmm. people, to say yep. this did not work, yep. this fell over. Mm -hmm look it didn't work for this reason this reason and this reason great it might have worked in Auckland mm. but here mm -hmm. because of a whole lot of other little factors yep. it hasn't worked for us mm -hmm. so let's look at something else or go back to the drawing board or, yeah I don't know as long as we're you know kind of continuing mm -hmm. on yep. down that road and uh, making sure that what we're doing is actually having value for the people that are using mm -hmm. it yep. and the wider community of course mm -hmm. then yeah. so good so good it's just dawned on me like I've I, I, uh, invited you to introduce yourself at the beginning there, but you've actually been a little bit too um, uh, too modest. I'm just um, thinking back to the recent um, shortlisting that you uh, received at the National <laughs> Health and Safety Awards at Safeguard. Yeah. Uh, I, have to, I have to bring it up because, like, <laughs> even as you're talking, I'm just like, oh, you're so into this. Like, this is such your 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 thing, and mm. you know, quite rightly, you were acknowledged for it. So, congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, it super was stoked for you. Rather embarrassing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it was really cool. Mm. Actually, it was a really cool experience. Um, and actually, this is the thing, is that the coolest thing for me about that Safeguard Award experience actually was um, being able to take our health and safety cadet with me. Mm -hmm. um, because I got asked, oh, you know, is there anyone? We've got some free seats or you yeah. know, whatever. And I thought, who actually would be a really, who could get something out of this experience? Mm -hmm. So we've got our health and safety cadet who started with us at the start of this year, Petra. And I was like, you know, yep. this would be a really cool yep. experience for someone so that's good. so fresh faced mm -hmm. to see, be amongst it, meet other people. And, you know, the cool thing about the Safeguard Awards I always find is listening to what other people, because it's mm. all industries, you know, Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when you work in a, industry for an extended period of time you forget what the world looks like outside yep. of that so mm -hmm. and uh being able to take ideas and innovations from other industries and going mm. hey you know maybe we could do that or mm. if we tweak that thing there we could totally apply that here yeah you know? yep yeah so mm. she was really buzzing after that so that was, was like so a little cool. warm fuzzy for me I'm like, yeah. yes <laughs> so and that's one clear example of why you were shortlisted for that award because <laughs> it was so thoughtful and it's such a, an amazing experience for that cadet as well like oh, what an entry into health and safety um mm -hmm. we will go back to your early days in health and safety in a moment but um you've just touched on something which i think is actually a really phenomenal idea is um <clears throat> we as a as a nation i think we need to um work hard at identifying opportunities and then making them available to do those knowledge shares and those, hey, this stuff works over here, this might work for you. Um, why does it have to wait for um, annual evening events mm -hmm. to, to be able to showcase that stuff? Yeah. It just got me thinking. I was like, man, there's got to be something in that. Just got me thinking. It's good stuff. Thank you. Of course, <laughs> to the fire. Always, always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at the moment, I, I, you know, we talked about this as we come online. It's, I think... As, as an industry, as a profession, I think we're doing a lot of soul searching at the moment. And I think, you know, for, for, the, for the right reasons, um, you know, it's, you know, a decade plus on since um, uh, uh, Pike River, we've had legislation change, regulate, regulatory change, um, so much change, but yeah, nothing mm -hmm. actually seems to have changed in, in 
in terms of stats, um, thinking outside the box, mm. stuff like that, I think it's going to be key, ultimately, getting us out of this. I think so too, mm. yeah. Mm. And um, I think, you know, we really have to... Um, I, I have found through my career, so I, I sort of started in health and safety between Pike and Haswa, right? Mm. So in that sort of bit there. And when I was very, very, very first starting out, I remember um, the health and safety manager for the uh, company I was working for, uh, I kind of told him I was interested in health and safety and mm -hmm. whatever else. And I was sort of doing a little aside role and he said, uh, right, okay, cool. If that's what you want to do, then that's all good. Uh, and uh, he sort of, it was a great little relationship because it meant that he could pawn off all the crap work he didn't want to do to mm. me and mm. I lapped it up, you know, yeah, it was just yeah, like yeah. a little sponge. So it was like yeah. this great little two-way sort of yeah. <laughs> relationship. And, um, but one of the first things that he did was he walked into the office I was working in and he went and put this massive stack of papers in front of me mm. uh, and he said, read that. It was my first task is mm. uh, wanting to be a health and safety person. Mm. He said, read that. And it was the um, Pike Commission report. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And mm. I read it mm. as a all of 20 something year old. Yeah. And that when I read it, the and actually when I was at Safeguard, um, mm. Sonia uh, and Anna were there receiving their, mm -hmm. um, you know, their awards. And I actually pulled uh, Sonia aside af after, you know, the awards had finished. And I said to her, I told her that, and I said, um, the feeling I felt when I finished reading that report mm. has followed me in every single decision mm. I have made in my career ever mm. to date. And yep. it still does. Mm -hmm because the anger and the frustration and the, the we've got to do better here, yep. that has never gone away for me. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever I'm sort of in a really, really tough position or I'm really pushing back on something mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. want to see something happen and it's not happening or what have you, mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm ready to just, you know, give up or let go or whatever, I always think I grab onto that little um, bit mm -hmm. of, whatever it is mm -hmm. uh, and and i think no we've got to do better we've mm. got to do better and i'm and i'm not going to take no for an answer or whatever it might be you know mm. yeah um so i think that pike has left a legacy and people need mm. to know and i and mm. you know especially people like sonia and anna and mm -hmm. families of the 29 need to know that there's a legacy there and, and yep. we haven't forgotten we mm. have not forgotten mm. even though it's all these years later yeah. Yeah, you know. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Mm. Um, what an amazing uh, act by your your original mentor, I suppose. Uh, it's amazing, um, mm. and also um, just a, a, an acknowledgement of the importance of keeping the the important stuff front of mind, right? Yep. No matter what. Hundred percent. Mm. It's really, really mm. simple. Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you think about it, it's really easy to get bogged down into the day to day stuff mm. and. I know, you know, I don't think I've met a health and safety person yet that hasn't thought, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Mm. You know, is this even the right thing for me? Mm -hmm. And questioning yep. why are you there? Mm -hmm. You know, at some point you might lose your mojo, all those kinds of things, you know. But yep. if you come back to those really simple things, yeah. um, it can help ground you and yep. remind you why you're, why you're there. Absolutely, mm. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's a really salient point. Um, okay, let's let's fast forward. Well, actually, let's let's stay back in, in this this history of time. Mm -hmm. So, so you've gone. You've had you've, your initial experience. You've you've been given this really disturbing but um, all important report to read through. Um, then. Um, Canterbury earthquakes. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the thick of the rebuild. Um, that's certainly where I cut my teeth in health and safety. Um, and I recall, I think this is where we met. Um, you were working with Safer Rebuild. Is that what it was called? I was at the Safe Rebuild Initiative. Yeah. Before that, I was working for another construction mm -hmm. company. I can't remember where we met. 
I remember sitting in a coffee shop with you somewhere though. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this guy thinks like us. You know, like, <laughs> Plotting and scheming. And the rest is history. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I was at the Safe Record Initiative mm. for uh, nearly a year, I think. Yep. And that was a really cool experience. Mm. That was a really cool experience. Yeah, but... so you got to spend a heap of time with lots of different construction companies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yep, so totally. tell us about that. So what was the role? What was it all about? Okay, so the Safe Rebuild Initiative was a government union business tripartite right. yep. that mm. was government funded mm -hmm. um, which essentially provided free health and safety training okay. to mm. uh, SMEs that were working within and around the rebuild mm -hmm. um, so it was a really unique role yep. um, it included you know doing delivering training basically and mm -hmm. basic health and safety training for people for free so it didn't cost them anything mm -hmm. um, and also basically just doing the old cold calling being out and about visiting sites that sort of stuff letting people know that this free resource was there and mm -hmm. offering them assistance too um, with uh, you know maybe helping with some toolbox talks mm -hmm. uh, just that real grassroots stuff yeah. Um, and I found that so like, it was such a cool role. It was mm. such a cool role, um, and it was such a unique uh, setup in the instance of it being, you know, between with the uh, Canterbury um, Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. and uh, the union as well, working yeah. hand in hand, yeah, yeah. which is <laughs> usually of. yeah, exactly. But yeah. I mean. For the rebuild, that mm. was the kind of thing mm -hmm. that had to happen. Yep. And that's just one example of mm. people that wouldn't usually be sitting in the room together, uh -huh. uh, sitting in the room together, because if they didn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't going to work. Yep. You know, uh, And yep. it's very similar you know, with the Canterbury Rebuild Safety Charter that yep. formed uh, way back when, mm -hmm. uh, about 2013. Yeah, they've just had their 10th anniversary, yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, pe again, people that wouldn't usually be having talks mm. or yeah. holding things a bit closer to the chest actually mm. saying, you know what, if we all just get on the same page and have mm. some good conversations, then let's see yeah. where this takes us. So yeah, yeah. yeah very that, similar. Thanks. That's really insightful mm. too. Because, um, yeah, I guess it's easy to forget that there was so much um, uh, collaboration between all of these various groups that, mm -hmm. yeah, you're quite right, otherwise probably wouldn't have been talking to one another. Um, it was a really uh, awful time, but at the same time, it was a really exciting time, I, I felt. Like, mm. ev everyone was trying stuff out for the first time. Um, I was meeting really exciting people such as yourself, and I actually just you know, ha had a bit of time to talk through ideas and have a bit of yeah. a play around with what was going to work and what totally. wasn't. Um, so, I mean, you've kind of alluded to the importance of all of these various parties actually coming together and working out a way to make this work, which is probably just as important today as it was then. Mm -hmm. um, for, <clears throat> for the health and safety audience, for business leaders that perhaps are tuning in, is there any, uh, is there any other kind of key takeaway or, or something that you can think of that may be worth sharing or springs to mind? For the rebuild specifically, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that's a bit of a tricky one to mm. really pinpoint eloquently, I guess. But I think there's a lot to be said for um, leaving the company hat at the door, mm. right? Yeah. So mm. creating opportunities, mm. and if you sit there and you think, "Oh gosh, no one else is doing this," actually, sometimes you just have to be the person that does it mm -hmm. and invite people and whoever wants to be willing to sit at the table and have mm. the conversation and as I say take the company hat off mm -hmm. and actually just have a conversation yep. um, about what you're trying to achieve where you want to go how you can help each other out mm -hmm. you know um, have some transparency about what's going on yeah then you know usually you find out that other people are having exactly the same challenges as you are mm -hmm. And they might have some great ideas and mm. you might have some great ideas you can share with them and yep. and take those so mm. it's all about connection you know yep. and that sort of stuff mm -hmm. i've thought uh quite a bit recently about um the cyclone affected areas mm -hmm. up north yep. and how um maybe you know we've had a, a whole uh situation here where we mm. had an entire city area mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it yep. uh that was devastated by a natural event mm -hmm. 
and we did a lot of guinea pigging and trial and error and mm. safety charters and yep. working in with site safe and, and all mm. these kinds of things mm. to um, for better outcomes for everyone. Mm. And I've sort of looked at what's happening up north and thinking, wow, is anyone going to take what we learned here mm. and sort of apply that up yeah. there? I don't know if that's... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. thanks for saying that too because mm. that, that was... Same, same thought at the time. Mm. I was just like, oh, oh, could this be the next opportunity to kind of re-energize all of this? Because mm -hmm. um, I, I, I recall um, London Olympics. So was it 2012? Um, massive success, mm -hmm. like from a health and safety point of view, yeah. huge success. And so we had representatives of the, the, the business and health and safety leadership coming over from the UK to show. Lawrence Waterman, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So exactly. good, right? Yeah. And, um, and it all came back to exactly what you're saying is just like just leaving the politics at the door let's just actually collaborate having a clear line of um what good looked like for the entire supply chain so everyone mm -hmm. had a consistent approach and expectation kind of started to see signs of that I, I, i'm not sure i'm not sure if we're there now like I, it feels like there's been lots of opportunities that have kind of come for one reason or another they just haven't haven't taken off or mm. hasn't been um, accepted by enough parties mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think that's one of the common frustrations at least today I see in the construction space is just tell us what good looks like and we will go for that standard unfortunately there's still all this conflicting attention project management and construction business owners and health and safety professionals are you seeking expert guidance to streamline your health and safety processes Look no further than Advanced Safety, New Zealand's leading health and safety consultancy. Our team specializes in comprehensive capability assessments, tailored systems, exceptional training, and ongoing support. We're here to simplify your journey, ensuring you achieve demonstrable legal compliance efficiently. And here's the best part. With Advanced Safety, you're guaranteed results. We commit to achieving compliance within 180 days or less, providing you with peace of mind and saving you valuable time and resources. Say farewell to intricate procedures and welcome simplicity. Our experts excel at simplifying health and safety, empowering you to focus on your core business operations. To explore our franchise opportunities for health and safety professionals and our comprehensive suite of solutions for construction and project management companies, visit advancedsafety.co.nz today. Advanced Safety, simplifying health and safety for New Zealand businesses. Conflicting. Yep. Uh, totally. Opinion. Yeah. 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 Yep. I'd agree. There is there is a degree of that, um, and it can be frustrating at sometimes. You know, because mm. you think that something you know you've got a really good idea about something or yep. what have you, and it just doesn't take off. Mm. But you know, if you want something to happen, you really have to push for it. I think. Yeah. But also, you know, by the same vein, you have to be willing to sort of look at what you're willing to invest of yourself into it mm. as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know. Yes, this is very true. Um, and I think for people like you and I, I think um, it kind of crossed my mind earlier is that um, we, we are often the first to put our hands up to do things, <laughs> uh, sometimes to our detriment, right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, Totally, yeah. And this probably leads quite neatly to my next question for you because um, you also, I mean, you volunteer for lots of different things, but one of the things that you volunteer um, for is the um, the emerging leaders. Mm -hmm. And so um, perhaps what we've just been talking about in terms of those emerging health and safety leaders in New Zealand and beyond, um, what are some of the um, top tips or pieces of, of advice that you would give to someone who's who's either moving into or is starting to kind of flourish yeah. in the health and safety space? Um, I would say first and foremost, find a community. Mm. Find a community of other health and safety people. Yeah. Reach out, mm. um, you know. Um, another big one would be don't be afraid to ask questions. Mm -hmm. If You know, if you need to keep asking questions to satisfy yourself and your own understanding of something, mm. just keep asking. Be the annoying person. I mm -hmm. was that annoying person, <laughs> you know, and I'm still that annoying person. <laughs> if I if yeah. I don't understand something mm -hmm. and I feel like I haven't got enough of a grasp of something to be able to say, yes, cool, um, I know how to work with this, mm -hmm. 
then I just keep asking questions. Mm -hmm. um, another one would be probably the biggest one for me would be um, understand, recognize your own limitations. Mm. Um, I'm really big on if I don't know the answer to something, if some, if I'm on a site somewhere and someone mm. asks me a question and yep. I don't know the answer, mm -hmm. I will never make something up and I'll never lie and I'll never pretend that I know, that I know the answer to it. I'll just mm. say, I don't know, but let me write that down and I'll get back to you, mm. you know, and, and I'll go off and I'll, and I'll find out whatever the answer is, mm -hmm. even if it's something that they don't necessarily like, or I know that they're not going to like hearing, mm -hmm. I'll still get back to them on it. Um, and that's the great thing about, uh, the health and safety profession is mm. that you know i have called uh cold called people working for s different suppliers mm. uh people that i know have a particular interest in something mm. uh when i'm struggling with something and i have never ever had someone say no mm. right yep. uh, if i'm really struggling with something or looking for a piece of it's really specific advice mm -hmm. um i need a hand with something um I've never contacted someone and they've said, no, sorry, I don't have time for you or whatever. Mm. People are generally just willing to share their knowledge. And that is so, so cool. Yeah. But in the flip side of that is that, you know, we have to be willing to also be that person, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a two-way street. So mm. I have a real thing of as much as I take, I need to be giving, mm. whether that's to whoever it is that's helping me or whether it's to the mm. wider community or emerging leaders yeah. um so yeah you know make make use of the people that are, are around you mm -hmm. um i had a, a situation not a few weeks ago where I, I was really looking for some specific detail around some scaffolding stuff mm. um, and i needed to hear from someone who had really extensive wide industry knowledge and mm. i knew one person who i don't know well but i just rung him up i found yeah. his phone number and i rang yeah, him and i was like awesome. hey you seem like the kind of guy that would know the answer to this question. And he was like, yeah, cool. You know, and, and that was really, really neat. Um, so yeah, good. and I, I guess the other one would be, the other main one would be for emerging safety leaders is to stay on the bus, mm. you know. Um, health and safety is a really unique profession and that it is an intersection of a lot of other professions. Um, no one tells you when you decide you want to be a health and safety person that what you actually are going to have to be mm -hmm. is part lawyer, part psychologist, part engineer, everything, you know, yep. org psychologist, mm -hmm. uh, probably a little bit of a counsellor thrown in there, mm -hmm. uh, management, a little bit of HR, yeah. um, you know, it, it's, it's a whole mishmash. Mm -hmm. And because of that, things are constantly moving, con things are constantly changing, yeah. and we can't stop learning ever. So we have to get on the bus and mm -hmm. we need to make sure we stay on the bus, you know, even mm -hmm. if it's just a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, otherwise the world will move on without us and we stay stationary and, mm. and that's not a great place to be most of the time. Yeah, no, you know? it's really sound advice and I, I completely, utterly agree with you in terms of the multitude of hats that we have to wear mm -hmm. in the role. It's nuts. Um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, and, and it feels like the, the scope continues to increase as well. Um, I, totally I know agree. like in the last, couple of years really um psychosocial um health um has really become mm -hmm. apparent mm -hmm. um and it's very firmly in the health and safety space yet, yeah yet none of us seem to really be particularly well um tooled or resourced to to manage that mm -hmm. um so i guess where's my rambling going it's probably around the importance of um uh putting your mask on first i suppose mm -hmm. um because Otherwise, no one else is going to do it, right? Um, so I think we're, we're both, as I've alluded to before, often the first to put our hands up to, to do the extra yards. But um, mm -hmm. it's also very important to have good practices in place to support your own health and well-being as yep. well. 100%. Mm. Yep. You, you mm. have to do it. Mm. You have to do it. And I think that that is one element that's um, really sort of I don't want to say it's been absent for um, sort of 
people getting into health and safety mm-hmm. or starting their journey in the profession. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's actually, we have to be, where we have got a health and safety cadet or a administrator or, or someone that we're working with in or around that is just beginning their journey, mm-hmm. I think the best thing we can do is actually show them what it looks like mm-hmm. to have balance. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I'm not just talking about this whole, you know, you leave work and you turn off your work brain, you turn on your, your home brain because I don't really believe in that. I think mm. you're a whole person all the time and you carry both yep. with you no matter where you go. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we really have to be, one of the best things we can do is, is show them that it's actually all right to say no mm. or to have a day off yep. or to, you know, whatever that might look like. Yeah, you know, um, because otherwise they will head for burnout, like yeah. lots of us have. Mm-hmm. Um, and burnout is not a great place to be. No, no yeah. way. No, thank you. It's, it's such important advice. Um, and also just thinking back to your point around um, the importance of community as well and finding your tribe in a way. Um, yeah. I think going right back to when we first met, I think that was kind of one of the things we were talking about was the need for a space to just simply be and mm-hmm. to ask questions and, and to be honest with ourselves and yep. each other, um, which um, fast forward, I mean, it, it led to the establishment of the New Zealand Health and Safety Professionals. It's a, an, an online community. Um, you're, you know, you play a key part in that. You're one of the administrators and, and kind of help to keep, keep the, the, the madness in line. Mm-hmm. But then actually saying that, so it so ends at HSP, Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, I think it's about like, there's over 1,500 members on each each of the, the groups now. And one of the things that the the group always amazes me is how little admin actually is required mm. and the, um, the the depth and breadth of the conversation and the content mm-hmm. on that page. Like everyone is just so happy to share. I so, know, yeah. it's cool, right? Mm. And um, the interesting thing as well, as you say, you know, is that um, it's almost a little bit self-moderating yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because everyone that kind of joins, I think, uh, understands the the tone that we want to see mm. within the group. Yeah. And if someone feels that something's a bit off or, mm, you know, that comment that that person's made is a little bit bad taste or mm. there's some underlying dig there or whatever, yep. you know, then they'll sort of, you know, report it or whatever mm. so we can have a look and, yeah. But it's, um, it, I don't want to use the term like self-policing because <laughs> that sounds really, really, um, you know, like enforcement, but mm. it's not that. It's just that yep. it's a cool space. Mm. Um I utilize it for stuff as well, you yeah, know, if, yeah. if I know that I'm looking for something that I, again, I don't mm-hmm. have a huge amount of knowledge in mm-hmm. and I know that I'm going to end up down a half day long legislative rabbit hole trying mm-hmm. to find something that yep. I have no idea where it is. Mm-hmm. I might just pop a thing in there that's like, hey, have we got any health uh, um, hazardous substances mm-hmm. um, experts here or whatever that might be able to tell me where to find this because yep. it's a bit of a shortcut to... Yeah. Um, you know, and some amazing person will come back and say, yep, you want to Google this, 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 or here's a link to that, or mm. whatever, and I'll be like, oh, that's exactly yeah. what I need, you know? Yeah, you know, it just crossed my mind. It's like, <laughs> it's like the, it's like the chat GPT of health and safety, but, <laughs> but the answers are actually um, uh, true. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's it, you <laughs> and know. The, and the um, links have been tested. <laughs> yeah, or, because it, mm. it is really, um, it's just about making mm. use of, you know, other people's, knowledge and stuff too mm. you know yeah. um and, and offering yours up where you can to, mm. to help out yep um give and take yeah you know? yeah yeah definitely yeah it, it has it's, it's, it was always a bit of an experiment but um it's been awesome mm-hmm. um we're now starting to get back into doing some local um coffee groups which is a long time coming mm-hmm. covid got, kind of got in the way of that yeah um maybe some maybe some bigger events coming up in the horizon we'll see um but yeah yeah we, we, awesome. we pulled off a, a whole day conference back in 2018 um here in christchurch that was fun we did that it was, was so, so much fun yeah that was so much fun. <laughs> so who knows I, what was nice about that day is uh, similar to what you were saying earlier on is we managed to tap into um local suppliers and providers of 
um, equipment and uh, machinery plant and we got to play with it, which is something that yeah. we don't always get to do. Mm -hmm. So that was good. So yeah, who knows? Watch this space, I reckon. Trends and inf innovation. So inevitably, you, you're kind of, you're at the coal face. So, and, and also you're with a, you're working with an organization that clearly values trial and error. Um, are there any, any new um, whiz bang methods or, or, or you know, methods that you're seeing that? Oh, um, there's a few. Um, some of them aren't necessarily new, but I think are being pushed into the forefront a little bit more now. Um, things like safety and design. Mm, um, yep. that's, a, that's a really big one. Mm -hmm. um, and learning teams as well. Mm, yes. Um, so, you know, the whole workers imagine work versus work is done, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, to make sure that lessons are actually taken from, from mm -hmm. what, we, what we're doing yeah. um, and being transparent about the fact that how we plan things in organisations or plan a task or an operation or whatever mm. is generally never how, exactly how it's going to yeah. go. It yeah. just isn't. Mm -hmm. um, so recognising that... Mm. And being honest about it mm -hmm. and actually going, cool, yep. you know, but mm -hmm. what innovations actually came out of things not going to plan, yeah, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. those are little golden nuggets yep. um, that you want to hold on to mm -hmm. and pull into the future. And um, I think at the moment as well, there's a real budding space around uh, integration of um, te ao Māori and uh, things like te whare tapawha mm -hmm. as well. Yep. Um, those sort of elements and, and, and principles, mm -hmm. um, people like Vance Walker, he's doing some mm -hmm. great research uh, yep. into that at the moment, mm -hmm. um, which is really exciting to see. We've obviously got our Tapo Auto office at WorkSafe, the, the Māori mm -hmm. um, WorkSafe office as well. They're yep. doing a, a, a bit of work there too, and mm -hmm. I'm having some conversations with them around uh, looking at piloting some great test programs which I can't Ooh. speak too much oh, that's exciting. about at yeah, the yeah, moment yeah. but yeah. um Great. you know if it eventuates I'll, mm -hmm. I'll definitely be sharing in and around that so yep. I think those sorts of things um mm -hmm. and the thing I love about uh you know introduction of uh more te ao Māori aspects mm -hmm. and health and safety too mm -hmm. is actually that the bulk of um of those sort of sentiments and, mm. and and those ways of doing those things, we've been we've been hearing about safety too and learning teams mm. for mm. years now, right? Yeah. And safety differently and all mm. those sorts of things. And mm. we go, oh my gosh, this is magical, and it's all mm. about including people in the conversation that the work are actually doing the work or who it's affecting and making sure you're taking learnings and, and all those kinds of things. But if you actually look at <laughs> some mm. of these the ways of doing things that have been around for thousands and thousands of years. Mm -hmm. that's base, it's the same thing mm -hmm. and we've just reinvented it and yep. called it something else. Yep. Oh, that's probably a little bit controversial for me to say that. Well, you're in good company because um, I utterly agree. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, um, it, it's, uh, I, that's why I think it's great to see mm. that and, and stitching those things together yep. and making sure that things are of value to people too. Mm. Um, yes. You know. Yeah. Thank you. That's really insightful because you've kind of you've you've helped to um, uh, just give me the the confidence to to say that um, yeah I completely agree actually like in terms of the the new whiz bang concepts well they're not they're not that new anymore they've, yeah they've been around for a good five to eight ten years or even um, but the reality is that. Um, I actually don't think they're they're bringing much new to the table. No. It's just perhaps another another angle or way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, with my role, often I'm doing um, induction training with workers mm -hmm. um, and, and senior leaders as well. And and one of the things that I spend a lot of time on is the, the duties of the worker. So you've got the first two, which are really straightforward. You know, take care of yourself, take care of those around you. It's the third and fourth. I don't see much conversation around that, and I think it's critically important, like, um, to follow um, process or policy, um, and mm -hmm. to also follow instruction given to you. Mm -hmm. The message I, message I give to the workers is these two things here. This is telling us how critically important it is for you to speak up when you are being asked to review or to consider 
policy change or uh, an SOP mm -hmm. that's being developed. I guess the, the value that the conversation around Safety 2 and HOP and all of this brings is that at least it's giving us some structured method to have those conversations mm -hmm. to ensure that there yep. is that engagement taking place so that when we do develop policies and SOPs and all that other good stuff, that we can be confident that it actually is closer aligned to reality rather than someone, yep. one individual in the office writing that SOP, hoping that it's at least yeah. marginally close yeah. to what's actually happening. You know? And I guess I have some personal frustrations around that too. Over the years, seeing different ways of doing things and whatnot, mm. and one thing that I've always found endlessly mm. uh, yeah, frustrating is probably the best word for it, is um, someone in an organisation writing something, whether mm. it's a policy or a procedure or whatever, and then emailing it out to everyone mm. and saying... Um, if you've got any comment on this, come back to me. Mm -hmm. And considering that to be their consultation period, yes, yes. right? Yep. That's not consultation yep. to me, no. right? Mm -hmm. Actually taking the thing and mm -hmm. getting those people together in the yep. same room together mm -hmm. at some point yep. uh, and going through what's in there and having a discussion about it and finding mm -hmm. out what people do like, what they don't like, asking questions, whatever it might be mm. and doing all that sort of stuff taking notes mm. and then you know tweaking and whatever else and then mm. taking it to those people and going hey um is this you know what you think this should look like mm -hmm. right yep that's consultation mm. yep. not putting a deadline on something and saying mm. if you don't answer if i don't hear from you within this yep. particular period of time um i will consider that con consultative yeah um no yeah in, yep. my, in my my, no, no, my no. point of view. <laughs> I totally agree. Um, uh, you know, it's about those conversations. Mm. And, and I guess there's an element to that too of, um, uh, you know, I, I got to um, hear Vance Walker talk at an event, I think it was last year. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I thought was really, really cool that he discussed as part of his research was uh, sort of Western versus other um, mm -hmm. sort of indigenous cultures around the world and how they deal with health, safety and all those sorts of things. Um, and, you know, this sort of historical Western way of doing things is identifying something as being an issue mm. or a hazard or a risk or whatever and yep. putting a control in place. Mm -hmm. And then that's what everyone just has to do. Yeah. But then in the majority of indigenous cultures in the world, and this includes, um, you know, in, in te ao Māori or mm -hmm. in Māori culture, um, the where something is an issue or a risk or a hazard mm. is applying caution to that thing. So mm -hmm. it's not about telling people you must. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, or putting a barrier in place or putting a sign there that says do not do this. Mm -hmm. It's about having a conversation with people mm -hmm. so that they can make their own informed decisions mm -hmm. um, so that they can go out with the right information, right, to, mm -hmm. to, do what, to proceed yep. in a way that is safe to them. Yep. And there's a big difference between the two. Mm -hmm. When you look at the concepts of safety too or mm -hmm. op or whatever else, safety mm -hmm. differently, all that kind of stuff, that's really actually what it is. It's about having the conversation with people, yeah, thanks. giving them yes, the information yep. so that they can make their own decisions mm -hmm. uh, as the expert of their own work yep. to go forward and, and make good decisions, right? Yep. So. And now you can understand why Jen was shortlisted for a National Health and Safety Award. Um, so good. I don't know if any of that made sense whatsoever. Yeah, totally. I'm bad at going off no, the no, tangents it's, here. No, it's not. No, it's, it's, it's um, totally on point. It's so good. It's um, because the um, First Nation, the, the you know the, the, the native uh, peoples around the world, um, it's all about stories. It's all yeah. about um, yeah, that sense of yeah experiences and senses of belonging. So it totally makes sense. It's like Here's some knowledge that we're going to impart to you, um, and it's still up to you in terms of how you interpret and use that information. You can still go and experiment. You might, you know, burn a finger or do something silly, mm -hmm. but um, you you're given the. It, it goes right back to the, how we started this conversation around having the autonomy to um, make and create rules and practices based on your local region founded on a really solid level of trust 
um, from from senior pods. It, yeah. It's all that, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's and, so and, and I know a lot of people will look at that kind of thing and um, they consider it to be a bit airy fairy or a mm. bit fluffy or mm -hmm. a bit too feel good mm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when you actually look at what you've just said, mm. right, around giving people the information so that they can make decisions for their job mm -hmm. and that are well informed and training and all these kinds of things, mm. what is that? That is risk assessment mm. and the law says we need to assess risk. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. If, we're, if we're going down the hardcore compliance route, mm -hmm. that's one thing. Mm. Uh, some people who are heavily compliance focused might not consider these what mm. other, they might call feel good things as being assessing risk, yep. but in actual fact, that's what it is, yep. right? Mm -hmm. you know. And key thing for me right now is I haven't heard either of us mention a risk matrix once. <laughs> don't, don't get me started. Don't get me started on risk matrices. Uh, yeah, it's just like as long oh. as we can get it under that number, everyone's safe, right? It's like no. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, yeah, that's a that's a whole other conversation. Mm. I feel like that's a whole podcast episode. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. It's yeah, it, it, yeah. They might even go hand in hand with the idea of the whole professionalism of the industry and what does that mm. even mean um it actually takes me right back to um uh, jen and i uh, recently attended uh, a, a workshop training session by with, with uh, nippin nippin and nand mm -hmm. um uh, brought together by nzism good work guys um and one of the questions i asked nippin i just mentioned this in the previous interview actually um was around what is our role because the session had really taken right from the get-go at an, an unexpected angle. Uh, it felt more like a, a philosoph philosophy lecture in mm -hmm. a way. Um, I, I did philosophy back at uni way back when, so I was like, oh, this is familiar, this feels great. And it, it left me with the question of, okay, so what is our role? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what is the health and safety practitioner leader here to do if it's not the, the um the systems management and the policies and the processes what does that leave and uh nippin you know try and paraphrase now but he he basically said that the role of the health and safety leader is to um, be confident enough to have critical conversations with the ceo to encourage the ceo to actually question mm -hmm. and doubt their own perceptions yeah and i was like oh so good so so good yeah and, and i think that's from from, from the cadet uh, entry level health and safety practitioner, learn learn the structures, learn the systems, learn the processes, um, join the community and spend mm -hmm. time with your peers. Um, and as you progress, it's moving into the the people space, right? It's, yeah, yeah, it's, absolutely. Mm. Um, I heard a really interesting uh, sort of quote um, not that long ago, and I can't even remember who it was that said it or where I heard it, but it was something to the effect of um, the health and safety person uh, has a key to every part of the organization. Mm. And I really like that because it's so true, you know, I in my role, I speak to apprentices who mm. are, you know, out in the field. And I also have to s speak to the, you know, uh, the director and the chief executive and the, every other person in between. Mm. Yep. You know, you do, you really yep. do touch on every single part of the business. Mm -hmm. um, and that's quite unique, yep. you know. Yep, totally um, agree. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's possibly um, what keeps us both going in a way is is that each day, each hour really is different. Um, yep. Yeah, it's never the same day. <laughs> <laughs> so um, perhaps the, the key takeaway for um, for those tuning in, particularly in the early stages of their career, is that you know like you can go down so many different avenues, um, and there are so many good people to to speak to and to to reach out to. Um, so we've got. Um, the emerging leaders, we've got NZHSP, we've got NZISM. Um, if you're in construction, Chazams is out there. Um, uh, if you're a senior leader, there's the um, uh, New Zealand Business Leaders Health and Safety Forum. Um, WorkSafe's website is slowly getting better. Um, it's good for searching, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, and also, there's good people just like Jen, who are always yeah. happy to have a catch up over a coffee yeah, or a phone call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I um, I always always try and get back to everyone, yep. where, you know, as soon as I can. Um, yeah, I do field a lot of questions and emails and bits and pieces and stuff like that. Mm. Um, 
So yeah, it, um, but I mean, it's it's great to if I have a, if someone has a question for me and I, and I can answer it, I'll just you know yep. I'll make time for it. It's that's the way the world goes around, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, love it. So good, so so good. Um, I suspect we probably will be getting back together to do another talk, probably on um, uh, risk management. Health and Safety 101, <laughs> what, what that actually even means, right? Because um, it is, it's such a big can of worms, yeah, but I think sure. it, it needs needs to have the lid when mm-hmm. I'm truly ripped off it, I reckon. Yeah. So we'll do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool. Well, Jen, thank you. It's been a pleasure. No worries. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll catch up it's always soon, a yeah. pleasure talking to you. For yeah, sure. um, likewise, it always just kind of inspires me and gets me thinking about bigger, more audacious things, actually. So yeah, watch this space. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Jen. All right. Thanks so much.